Hello there, and welcome back to this rather spooky part 4 of the history of the Werneth Incline. If you are just joining us, part 3 left us here at Middleton Junction, watching the locals empty the coal from a tender of a black five. Recovery efforts are now taking place. So let's take a look at the map. Starting here, where we left off at Middleton Junction Station. We are going to travel back up the Chadderton Goods Line route for a little while. Back over the Rochdale Canal until we reach Chadderton Junction. And then we are going to carry on up the main line. Which is the Middleton Junction and Oldham Branch Railway. Passing under the road which is now Broadway which is where we will hit the Werneth Incline before ending our trip at Werneth Station and the massive facilities of Hartford Ironworks so let's get this journey underway here again at Middleton Junction paying our fare to the helpful cat waiting in the ticket office we climb the stairs and step onto the platform Just in time to see the express fly past. Our train, unfortunately, will be far less grandiose. With the 1 in 27 gradient on the incline, only short trains can make it to Oldham without assistance. Departing Middleton Junction, we pass in between Green Lane Mill, renamed Apex Mill in 1922 which was demolished following a fire on the 10th of February 1928. Also the Grimshaw Mill, built by the Grimshaw Lane Spinning Company, closed in 1930 and demolished in 1946, before crossing the Rochdale Canal again, and past Junction Mill which closed in 1955, but was only demolished in the year 2000. Arriving at Chatterton Junction signal box once again. This time we are staying on the main line. Saying our fond farewells to the Chatterton coal line for one last time, we arrive back at the foot crossing. This photo looking back at the signal box, and this one showing the path under the coal line from part two. Passing Fernifield Farm and its namesake Colliery on the left. And Fox Denton Farm on the right.
Bridge two on the line, which is a crossing connecting the two farms, has over the decades gained a rather macabre title. Local folklore tells of the tale of Johnny Whitehead, a young farmer whose life was cut short when he attempted to hang himself from the original 19th century wooden bridge, which was erected soon after the railway was opened. Regrettably, Mr Whitehead's timing coincided with the Manchester-bound train and the driver had no hope of seeing him. The bridge was soon replaced by a more solid one with brick foundations, allowing heavy farm machinery across the line, but the name was kept. The London, Midland and Scottish Railway Bridge Registry adopted the name, making it official. Urban legend tells of the ghost of Johnny Whitehead, following those who lingered too long while crossing the bridge. Hopefully he is now at rest, as the bridge was demolished in 2019. Now following the footpath, which could possibly have been laid with the gravel left under the bridge, we reach Lydia Becker Way. With all the trees removed, the land is of course returning to its marshy origins, with both the Stock Brook, for which the area is named, and Wintz Brook following down the incline here. Driving up the road, we pass the former location of Johnny Whitehead's bridge. The road now raised to meet the cutting's foundations and allowing Stockbrook to pass underneath. Lydia Ernestine Becker was born 24th of February 1827 and was the leader of the early British suffragette movement, as well as being an amateur scientist with interests in biology and astronomy. The family home was here at Fox Denton Hall and Lydia, the eldest of 15 children, was the daughter of Hannibal Becker, who owned a chemical plant in Chetherton. Known for miles around as the Vitriol Works, the chemical plant had its own sidings and signal box south of Middleton Junction, and we will be covering these later in the series. Lydia Becker died in France on the 18th of July 1890, before she could realise her main objective of the full vote for women which was gained in 1928. Going back to the drone footage, this clump of green buildings here was where Fernifield Farm stood. Panning right, we can see the line going under Broadway and the beginnings of the Werner Think line. This is Crossley Bridge as it was in the 1960s. Bridge number three carrying the A663 Broadway. And then we see what it has become.
But before we begin the ascent, to the right hand side of the line is the Ancora restaurant, now known as San Rocco, which was formerly the Red Barn. The famous Red Barn where a young woman, Maria Martin, was shot dead by her lover, William Corder. This murder occurred in 1827 when the building was located in Polstead, Suffolk. But in 1975, the Red Barn was dismantled brick by brick, timber by timber, meticulously numbered and reassembled in its present location. Maiden Maria Martin is said to still wander the balconies and has been witnessed many times. Below the Red Barn is the commonly known Red Barn Drain, which carries Wintsbrook under across the playing fields and was possibly the drainage outlet of the coal mines we will encounter higher up the hill. Now onwards and very much upwards as we finally begin the climb up the Werneth Incline. Werneth Incline was one of the steepest stretches of line regularly used in passenger traffic in this country. The next shots begin to show the true angle of the 1 in 27 gradient. The Middleton Junction and Oldham Branch Railway, the MJOBR, was opened on the 31st of March 1842 by the Manchester and Leeds Railway. Their chief engineer was George Stevenson and he considered it the best route to get to the ever-growing mill town of Cheddarton and its rich coal seams. The railway stopped at Werneth and did not prosper in its first few years and plans were quickly made for the line to come nearer to the town centre of Oldham. By 1838, Oldham had 213 textile mills, far more than Manchester. An extension was built to Oldham Mumps Railway Station, including the intermediate station of Oldham Central. The line and stations opened on the 1st of November 1847, and the railway finally began to show profit. Chadderton provided the coal, and alongside Oldham and the surrounding regions, spun the cotton and produced the textiles. The railway system around Oldham was completed when the line to Rochdale from Mumps opened on the 12th of August 1863 and the branch to Wrighton was completed on the 21st of March 1864. Other lines with the same gradient are the Mersey Rail Tunnel between Liverpool and Birkenhead. The Ecclesbourne Railway in Derbyshire and the former Hollywell Town Branch Line in North Wales. The Licky Incline south of Birmingham is the steepest sustained adhesion railway worked on the British Standard Gauge. Adhesion traction is simply the friction between the drive wheels and the steel rail. The term adhesion railway is only used when it is necessary to distinguish adhesion railways from other track types, such as rack and pinion. By the 1930s, road transport was taking over and the cotton mills and collieries were closing. Broadway, the new arterial road, was opened and the significance of the line was lost. The line to Manchester via Holling Wood, which opened on the 17th of May 1880 and which was much less steeply graded, took most of the traffic. From 1958, only one passenger service, an early morning train from Rochdale to Manchester, had been using the line. The branch line closed on the 7th of January, 1963. Unfortunately, just like the final special train on the 5th of January, 1963, this journey has slipped to a stand at the bottom of the incline. While we wait for assistance, why not like, subscribe, share and comment? especially if you have any stories from the surrounding area.
Contact details are in the description below. And since we'll be here for a while, you might as well check out some of my other videos. Special thanks to Jeff Jones, Chris Leach from the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Society, and Richard S. Greenwood, MBE, for their assistance in making this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next week when we continue our climb up to Walden Werneth.